MTN colleagues, thank you very much. Uh, to the working committee that has been working with Sharon, um, it's cross-functional. Um, I think to deliver this day, it started off as a thought, it became a concept, um, and now the reality of it is unfolding today because of all the work that you have done. And even being able to mobilize your own individual organizations in terms of what they are land lending, in terms of their capacity, uh, is absolutely uh, impressive. So really well done. My, my thoughts are few, and I'll share them with you. First of all, tomorrow I'm celebrating my one year in MTN. I came to MTN on the 3rd of October, and uh, it occurred to me this weekend that uh, tomorrow is actually my, my one year anniversary, and, and that was really exciting uh, to think about all the things that we've done. Time flies when you're having a good time. Uh, time also flies when you're also being stressed. Uh, so <laughs> I think it has been more good times. And when I think about kind of the milestones that I'm really proud of today, especially managing to launch this today before I hit my one year anniversary tomorrow is, is really, really uh, of meaning to me. So I really want to thank you all for allowing this to happen. Um, and then also MTN is celebrating our 25 years in Uganda. This is our birthday month. So you'll be seeing a lot of uh, activities that we'll be doing this month in terms of celebrating our 25 years. Um, and therefore, the launch of this um, initiative or program um, is part of the, um, of the things that we really want to be remembered for or to actually mark uh, this important milestone as we turn uh, 25. So as we come together uh, on these uh, significant occasions, I, 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 I don't stand me, uh, in front of you just as a CEO of MTN Uganda, but I also stand as someone who proudly um, represents uh, a company that is deeply committed to driving diversity, uh, inclusivity, and the empowerment of women. And if there's any testament to that, the fact that I am here as the first female CEO of this organization is a testament to the same. Our gathering today signifies the ignition of a critical movement, which is aimed at reshaping how our organizations think, uh, engage, and support, and cultivate the growth of women within our supply chain ecosystems. As has been said before, there is no way we can talk about um, enabling women's progress if we are not allowing them to participate in the spaces where uh, value, economic value is being created, or simply said where money is being made. The, I, I read the Bible a lot, and there's a, I think there's a, there's a scripture or a verse in the Ecclesiastes that said there was a, there's a, there was a wise man who lived in a city and he had the solution to solve the city's issues. But because he was poor, nobody listened to him. And that's what happens. Inevitably, if I was not Sylvia, CEO of MTN, it would be very difficult for me to be able to kind of engage and aggregate people al around a common vision and purpose. And we need to raise many more Sylvias. We need to raise many more Dorothys. We need to, to raise many more of us who are representing significant platforms that have the capacity to be able to aggregate and own the conversations that are being held here today to ensure that those who come behind us, and when I think about those who come behind us, I think about my daughter Jasmine, who's 14 years old. She's just joined year nine uh, in boarding school, and I'm asking myself, are the decisions that I'm making today going to have a positive impact when she comes into that one million additional people who are coming into the economic earning bracket. Um, have I made the world easier or have I made it a lot more difficult for her? And I think when we personalize some of the decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis, you then realize the opportunity that we have as leaders. I think leadership is a privilege. It's a privilege to do good. It's a privilege to create opportunities for others. It's a privilege to be able to drive a different narrative about capitalism and how profit is made. Because if we are making profit at the expense of the ones that we are representing in society, then I think that that profit is not going to be sustainable uh, in the long term. In the broader business landscape, we have witnessed women being systematically marginalized, either by default or by design. Um, when I, I referenced earlier uh, a quick look at our annual procurement expenditure, which is approximately 854 billion shillings, that's what Sharon, Sharon Sunday, see how it, 854 billion shillings 
looks like, right? She's the lady who manages all that. Please give her a clap, and you can approach her after this and tell her what business that you're in so that you engage in that uh, 854 billion. Um, so it, when you look at that, it, it shows an unsettling imbalance in terms of how the wealth or the money is being distributed. Uh, with female-owned businesses um, at 8% uh, and women in technology, which forms almost 80% of our spend at a paltry, I won't even say the point what it is, let me just say it's below 1%. Um, and this is driven by historical, co historical factors and other complex reasons. Um, and we can always make excuses for everything, but this inequitable situation most likely mirrors similar patterns across various sectors uh, in Uganda. So addressing this disparity is no longer a matter of choice, it is an urgent necessity. Neglecting the brilliance, resourcefulness, and untapped potential of half of our world's population, otherwise called women, not only stifles innovation, but also hinders societal progress. Cherry Blair said that when women have access to the same opportunities as men, they can unlock immense potential for themselves and their communities. So we must proactively be involved in conversations that are shaping the role that women are playing in our society as their inadequate representation constrains our country's development, leaving vital intellect and creative potential underutilized, which is essential for enhancing productivity. So to be able to drive to progress, I think we are all in agreement based on the conversations that we've had here today that these conversations must be inclusive, these conversations must reflect the diversity of the society that we have, and that these conversations must be intentional and deliberate because you can have the agendas defined, but at the end of the day, for the, wa for the statistics to change, it requires our intentional involvement in driving that change. So today, the Advancing Women Entrepreneur Program that we launched today transcends being a mere initiative. It stands as a solemn pledge by all of us who are here to dismantle barriers and equip women with the tools that they need to thrive in the business world. As MTN, we can create the opportunity. So we, there's, there's work that needs to be done, even in terms of how we source, how we procure. There must be policy changes that are made in terms of how do we deliberately ensure that we are inviting a lot more women to come and procure, how do we make our procurement decisions. But once we bring the women on board, to ensure that that statistics that uh, Stephen spoke about of having high uh, business mortality it does not then become part of the narrative that we're building, it requires a role of partners. These women, first of all, we need to work with them to make sure that they get, we'll offer them the opportunities, but where do they start working? Where do they start getting mentored? That where do they start getting um, the opportunity to reflect what it is that they can? And that's why we have the partners we have. They need funding, right? Uh, many of them, they have the dream, they have the passion, they have the desire. They don't have anybody who believes in them. When they walk into a bank, they're asked, show us uh, what is the amount of revenue you've been able to generate in the last three years. We know all those conversations. Uh, or show us what is your capacity or what is the level of equity that you have invested. If we start off from there, while those are important questions, we may not be able to move very fast. And that's what probably why we were given the statistic that at the current trajectory we are going with, it's going to take us 300 years. So we need financing partners, banking partners who think differently and who are willing to be able to look at this cohort of women that we are deliberately looking at and investing in and see what are the outcomes uh, we are able to drive. And it was good and great to hear what NSSF sh uh, shared based on the Women Accelerator program that they have and the results that they have been able to see. So can we create many more such um, initiatives? We already hear PSFU have uh, millions of dollars that they're willing to invest, but how do we make sure that even as we create these women businesses, they have the capacity to be able to consume, how they have the capacity to be able to turn that um, into a profit. And that's why then the participation of all the partners then becomes critical. We must provide mentorship, we must provide training, we must provide resources, financial to support to be able to transform these dreams uh, into reality. I think our goals are ambitious, uh, moving from below 1% as MTN, uh, to the 20% that Sharon is referring to will require a massive, massive shift. Um, it will require us to um, be very um, 
aggressive around some of the decisions that we make as a business. But I think the impact that they will have on unlocking economic growth where families and communities reap the rewards of 